person to move on to another aspect of the ministry. I'm not saying one is better than the other. To move on to another aspect of the ministry. What about you, Nishant? What's it like working with Father Michael? You know, the one thing that I always felt is, for example, like the inner healing services that we do here, exclusively done here in the center, which you don't get to experience even outside when we conduct. It's almost about two hours, two and a half hours of adoration when we don't even face each other. But the communication just flows in. And I would say it's like this. You have a mobile phone and your communication company. And I would say that communication company, if you translate, is like the Holy Spirit. So when Father is leading in, I know, I mean, I don't personally know it, but probably God leads me in to where he's heading. And when I'm just trying to fade off, God just leads him in to you know, take up. So we don't really feel, okay, now it's time for me to come in, now it's time for me to go out, but it just happens. So when the thought process is less, our focus on worshipping is more. So that brings a greater impact in the ministry you know, than when we think in our minds what we are to do next. When we are thoughtless, I feel the spirit moves. When we are full of thoughts, it's just our mind working in there. So that makes the difference, I think. And I, I, w- I would basically say, you know, it's it's not like people should not be thinking that um, we gel along along quite well because we are like chalk and cheese. I think I'm, I'm starkly different from him. So I believe, but the moment we are on a stage, we are doing, because we do have a lot of arguments, we do have a <laughs> lot of our thought patterns, but I believe that once we are on stage, it's just the presence of the Spirit. So outside, you're just two individuals and you can hold on to your own, own thought patterns. But inside, you're working for one God. And I think that makes a huge difference. So I think that's that's one thing I enjoy. I really enjoy the fact that the presence of the Spirit is moving around. And it makes it easier, definitely. And the two of you are definitely not just saying things for the camera. I want to mm-hmm. show the audience this, uh, to give them a glimpse of the ministry that the two of you do together. Right. So why don't you guys just take this short break and go and take a look at a few clips that we've put together of Father and Nishant working together. Our discussion is just getting heated up, so don't go anywhere. We'll see you on the other side of this one. When the children of God are honest to their heart and cry out to God, they will never go home defeated. And if our cry was genuine, we too will never go home defeated. For the mercy of God will be upon us. The greatness of our God will be upon us. Never think that God cannot do things in your life. in the world God's power hovered over the chaos
Welcome back. We're still in conversation with Father Michael Paipali and Nishant Fernando. And we are moving into a discussion now on the youth and the church. Father, uh, the youth are really passionate about whatever they do, whether it's music, their hobbies, the people that they fall in love with. They're passionate about everything around them. But when it comes to the church, there's a sense of lethargy, a sense of detachment, a sense of uh, a dispassionate approach. Why is that, Father? I would say it's more because of our of an understanding of the church that uh, they've been given. Um, it, it all depends. I would say it's it's double-sided. It's not just from the side of the youth. It's also from the side of the, the pastors, the one, who, the one who leads the church on to be able to project what kind of a church you want for the youth. And uh, you can just have a youth group or you can have a dynamic youth group. And I think you give them a dynamic youth group and the youth will be passionate. But at the same time, all said and done, it also has a lot to do what is what, what is the orientation of the youth? And this is not this is not just restricted to the church. I believe it is it has something to do with their educational setup. It has something to do with their family setup, where if in your family your prayers are boring, in the church your prayers are going to be boring. If in your if in your school setup or in your college setup you have a lot of negativity being passed around about religion and spirituality. I think that will just spill, spill over to the church. If um, their situations in their educational institutions are such that they, the only input they're getting in is a lot of negativity about spirituality, about religion, and I think that's going to spill over to the church as well. So they enter the church with a negative attitude. There's nothing good going on here. There's nothing hip going on here. And that's why when, when you have youth coming in for the youth retreats in Divine, they suddenly say, this is not we, what we thought. We thought it's a seminar. We thought it's a conference. And suddenly they realize that worship can be something beautiful. What about you, Nishant, from your experiences, especially with your friends and people who you, who you deal with? Mm -hmm. You probably have seen a completely different approach to, to the things that they do outside, say, for instance, music. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when, we, when they come to the church, it's all, you know, we, we'd rather sit in the back bench or, or outside. Yeah. The thing is, <clears throat> I would say, just like Father said, it's not about the one side. It's both sides which need to have a broader mind to see. The youth, I would say, being a youth, we must all realize that the people in authority, the priest, the parish priest, or whoever it is, they all have a lot more responsibilities than what we can see. They might be staying awake late in the rooms doing some work and maybe the youths have planned something for the next day and said, Father, can we meet you? And probably he'll say, no, not tomorrow. And they think he's just not you know, regarding us. He's just pushing us out. He just does not want to say yes to this. But they don't really realize that he's up to something with you know, some other important issues with the church, with the parish. That is a part of the youth. We need to start understanding the responsibilities. As youth, we are all being backed up by our parents. So there is not much of a responsibility that we could say because everything is taken care. Once we do, our parents cover up for it. But when it comes to the real world, when you start handling things, it's not so. If you slip, then there's nobody to cover up for you. And on the other hand, with, though you all are filled with responsibilities, the church, the one request from the side of the youth, I would say is, please make us feel comfortable. Because sometimes, though you intend to make us comfortable, we don't get it. We feel something odd. We feel that it is meant for only seniors because when it comes to church council meetings, there are only seniors in the council. When it comes to a youth, it is led by a senior person. That means his opinions, is, his opinions are given priority than any youth member in the group. Though we have a lot of youth missions happening around the place, it is headed by a senior person. Great. I'm certain and I agree to people who are by now saying without the elders you will not know what to do but we also have a lot of ideas and if only those ideas can start growing we will be able to react to the growth. Mm -hmm. if, our, if our growth is stagnant then we feel unhealthy and once we feel unhealthy we don't grow. 